Hello everyone and thanks so much for joining us for this uh, Monday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service and I'll be hosting today's show. Up uh, first here on the hazardous weather graphic showing advisories, watches and warnings. No watches or warnings, but winter weather advisories out here for the uh, central Tanana Valley back on to the southwest and also up in across uh, portions of the upper Yukon Valley there. Uh, for uh, continued gusty winds and maybe an additional two inches of snow will create low visibilities, reduced visibilities there in blowing snow. And I'll continue throughout the night tonight. It could pick uh, uh, up two inches, you get a storm total of about five to seven inches, say in the Fairbanks area or in that zone there, the greater Fairbanks area. Uh, some may be up to 10 inches in some areas for a storm total, but only an additional two inches expected. And again, those advisories out uh, through tonight. Also, the uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the winter weather or the snow advisory actually, or winter weather advisory here for the Manuska Valley, uh, remains out until 9 p.m. this evening uh, for continued uh, snowfall of uh, amounts five to seven inches. This will be total when it ends, and maybe as much as a foot falling toward Hatcher Pass. And then winter weather advisories out here for the Seward Peninsula, similar conditions, snow blowing, snow reduced visibilities, maybe less than half a mile at times. Uh, on up in toward the uh, Selawick Valley areas, down toward St. Lawrence Island, and uh, the also same thing going on up here. The winter weather advisory is out on the western Arctic coast. Again, winds gusting to 40 miles an hour or so, and uh, that'll create the low visibilities and blowing snow. Uh, that's out until noon on Tuesday. Otherwise, uh, this one for the Seward Peninsula, that'll be uh, probably ending toward morning. And moving on to satellite imagery, you can see the uh, westerly flow here coming, bringing moisture in, kind of another disturbance here, snow showers into the Pribilofs, on down to the eastern Aleutians, mixed rain and snow showers from Unalaska out toward ADAC. Otherwise, uh, here's the system that brought the snow in uh, today and late last night and today. You can see moving in and coming eastward there, one band into the eastern Arctic coast, and then the frontal boundary here pushing eastward across much of the pan, and it was still uh, kind of dragging off to the south across the southern areas there, and that bringing uh, rain or rain and snow mixed at sea level to the southeast coast, and in any elevation at all that's in the form of snow. A little bit of a break here, definitely becoming more showery there along the central coast, and the uh, strong wind should be gr gradually diminishing there uh, up around Skagway gusts in, uh, over above 40 miles an hour. Those will be coming down uh, later on. You can see the uh, main system moving mostly to the east and a little bit to the southeast. Cold air coming southward over the northwest interior there. That's going to be uh, coming southward and then swinging eastward as the next big storm out over the Bering, western Bering Sea begins to uh, affect the area out there. You can just see the outer cloud shield of that uh, massive storm there that will be affecting the illusions later tonight. Otherwise, uh, with the low tracking eastward, we had really strong winds today blowing across uh, from, well, Bristol Bay, uh, Southern Cook Inlet, Kodiak Island, uh, winds gusting 42 as high as 70 miles per hour there across areas of Kodiak Island. And definitely storm warnings out, Kachemak Bay, the Barrens, and Kodiak there, the Alaska Peninsula. Winds beginning to diminish this afternoon. I've seen gusts mostly in the uh, 30 to 40 mile an hour range over eastern Bristol Bay as the uh, gradient in the system pulls off to the east there, and those winds will continue to diminish tonight. Otherwise, out to the west, again, just some scattered snow showers around a weak trough here uh, just north of the Aleutian chain. We'll see we'll be dragging or scooting off to the east here. So still scattered snow showers possible there for the Fox Islands, the Alaska Peninsula, on into Bristol Bay with that continued onshore flow and these weak troughs rolling in. But the winds will be much lighter, not only for Bristol Bay, but Kodiak Island as well. See a lot less gradient here and a lot more westerly on the wind flow. So you should see a significant decrease in the winds this evening. Trough up here to the northwest probably will result in a solid band of light snow from north slope of the Arctic coast all the way down south-southwest across the Yukon Delta with uh, pretty numerous snow showers going on for Nunavak Island, beginning to scatter out for St. Lawrence Island. High pressure here building in across the western Aleutians, or I'm sorry, the central Aleutians with the ridge extending up across the western Bering and uh, definitely a break in the action there. And then the next storm, they're just off the chart and it's uh, pretty fierce by tomorrow 
forecast a center 949 millibars, so definitely storm force, possible hurricane force winds with this uh, system, pushing into the far western Aleutians, southwest bearing, high pressure nudging eastward here. Uh, nice day for the Fox Islands on Alaska and Nikolsky Dutch Harbor, looking really good, as well as the Prairie Lofts there, probably see possibly a fair amount of sunshine with uh, definitely the snow showers ending. And that'll be back along the coast here, lingering as a couple of weak disturbances continue to slide southeastward on the uh, east side of this uh, ridge, extending all the way into the Russian Far East. Another trough here, a little bit more extensive area, light snow, central interior back down, and then mostly along the Alaska Range or the Kuskokwim Mountains. Uh, clear skies are mostly clear, variably cloudy. Some sunshine there for the Seward Peninsula on up to the Kobuk Valley in the northwest coastal areas. And again, winds will be much lighter up there tomorrow than they were today where they were gusting, oh, 50 miles an hour or more at Cape Lisbon this afternoon. But a trough will keep uh, snow in the forecast there for the central north slope on out to the eastern Beaufort Sea coast. Otherwise, scattered snow showers north of the Alaska Range. Look for some clearing here, dry south in the mountains there with the offshore flow here, down sloping winds. Still a chance of snow showers for Kodiak Island. and. Uh, a little bit of an increase in the winds there, and a trough keeps, uh, or actually a series of weak troughs will keep a chance of snow showers across the panhandle, especially central and southern areas, through the day tomorrow. And then the outlook for uh, Wednesday, you can see a pretty good storm cranks up here right by the uh, moves of the Queen Charlotte Islands. So that'll bring uh, best chance of snow into the southern southeast coast there um, from Dixon entrance southward, but uh, still a pretty good chance maybe for areas like Heidelberg, Annette, Metlakatla, and uh, maybe Stewart Hyder too far north. Otherwise, just uh, scattered showers. Tightening gradient over the northern panhandle. You know what that means. Uh, gusty north to northeast winds, uh, probably reaching gale force here. Same thing along the North Gulf Coast. Channeled outflow winds, Copper River Delta, for example, uh, beginning to diminish in the afternoon for Prince William Sound, but still pretty windy even for Resurrection Bay through the afternoon, although they'll be decreasing. A trough uh, keeps the north slope and Arctic coast. Uh, unsettled with uh, light snow, fog, and flurries and lower flying conditions. And that intense storm tracks northward there. Uh, weakens a little bit, only six millibars, but in the front, and that causes the front to not advance too fast to the east here and uh, weakening over the southern portion, but still warm air coming northwards for rain for the eastern Aleutians. Snow and blowing snow on the increase, especially in the afternoon for St. Lawrence Island with uh, snow reaching Nunavak Island, but uh, just barely reaching the Yukon Delta coast. Moving on to uh, the forecast uh, low temperatures for tonight. We've got uh, possibly falling below zero with a clearing here into the uh, Susitna Valley, maybe down five below there in the Willow area on up toward uh, maybe Talkeetna. Otherwise, same thing for the Copper River Basin, looking for the lows a little below zero and a little farther below zero there for the eastern interior areas. Up to the north, uh, that's where the coldest temperatures will be around Arctic Village, minus 25 for the lows, otherwise north slope and Arctic coast uh, below zero. And then uh, teens here for the southwest coast and Bristol Bay. And then into the lower to mid 30s as you head down the Alaska Peninsula on out to the Aleutians. Lows in the 30s there for the southeast coast. Highs for tomorrow, uh, much cooler. Highs only in the teens here for south central Alaska, Cook Inlet, even cooler for the Sitna Valley around 12 for Golcana. Lower to mid-teens for the Tanana Valley, below zero up there toward the eastern Brooks Range area. And uh, a little either side of zero there for the Arctic coast, anywhere from five below to five above. And uh, 10 to 15, the Seward Peninsula, 20s in the southwest, upper 20s, Bristol Bay. And uh, lower 40s for the Aleutians, and uh, lower 30s to maybe near 40, mostly in the 30s for the Panhandle. And then moving on to the low temperatures for the next morning, Wednesday morning, uh, about 5 to 15 below up here over the northeast interior and staying above zero for the most part. Uh, Tanana Valley into the Copper River Basin, a little warmer now for the uh, south central areas. High or lows really uh, not much lower than what the highs tomorrow afternoon will be. It looks like upper teens to mid 30s for Kodiak Island and then uh, lows near 40 over the southern southeast coast to 30 say toward uh, Haines and Skagway and then uh, 40s there for the Aleutians. And then the afternoon highs, about the same picture there with uh, lower to mid 40s, about uh, highs in the uh, minus 5 to 15 degree range up there to the north. And otherwise, uh, stays mild for the most part comparatively over the panhandle. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. 
a lot of IFR here from the uh, northern or the Yukon Delta in across the Cusquam Valley all the way up to the western Arctic coast there, much of the Brooks Range and also right along and north of the Alaska Range, Tanah Valley on down to the 40 mile country and then down to the uh, uh, Wrangell Mountains. IFR also there, mostly on the Bering Sea side of the Alaska Peninsula, improving the VFR out toward Nikolsky, Adak, Atka VFR, more IFR slipping on up into the western Aleutians. Panhandles, IFR over toward the border, otherwise marginal. And then for tomorrow afternoon, IFR here along and just on the north side of the Central Brooks Range here, improving back to the west and south now, uh, becoming VFR all the way down into northeast Bristol Bay, Kodiak Island, of course, uh, offshore flow here, VFR flying conditions forecast, and uh, pretty likely here, Cook Inlet, South Central Alaska, with uh, the lower conditions on the west side of the mountains and a swath of marginal stuff here from the northern Bering Sea right down to the Alaska Peninsula, mostly marginal over the Panhandle and more IFR out west. That continues eastward to Adak and Atka for Wednesday morning. Another band of marginal VFR here uh, from St. Matthew Island to the Alaska Peninsula, back into the VFR and uh, IFR though up here over the eastern interior areas right on down toward the uh, Alaska Range here and then marginal mostly with some patchy IFR, switching over the eastern north slope. Otherwise really good out west. Panhandle socked in with IFR. And then for the afternoon on Wednesday, that uh, burns off to marginal VFR, hugging the south coastline there. Otherwise really good southeast coast. Uh, Gulf of Alaska, Kodiak, all of the interior, some marginal VFR around the Brooks Range and the central Arctic coast. And a band slowly edging eastward here of IFR just reaching western St. Lawrence Island and then down to the Alaska Peninsula and uh, to the west. Passes shaping up like this for tomorrow. Anatovic and Adigan, both marginal VFR. And for the Lake Clark and Merrill, occasionally marginal, same forecast for rainy, occasionally marginal VFR. And windy, same forecast, uh, mostly marginal, which means it could be VFR at other times. And Isabel marginal, as well as Mentasta. Pretty much all the past is looking uh, pretty marginal, except for Tanita, which will be VFR. And for Portage, VFR forecast as well as Chilkoot and White uh, will be marginal. Freezing levels uh, at the surface there, north of the Pribilof Islands out here in the Bering Sea, back down to the southern Kodiak Island, back up toward Yakutat, and then cutting across the panhandle there, moving over toward the uh, Hyder Stewart area, with 2,000 feet still off to the south there and uh, not quite making it up to Adak and Atka. Icing-wise, uh, best chance out, or the heaviest icing will be with that next intense storm uh, coming up toward the uh, western Aleutian Southwest Bering with uh, considerable moderate rime, above 6,000 feet out there over the uh, far western Aleutians. It'll be slowly moving eastward. And then some areas of uh, icing here, light to very isolated moderate there over the central interior down to the Alaska Range and below about 3,000 feet up there for the North Slope Eastern Arctic Coast, above 4,000 for the Southeast Coast, uh, possibly of the mixed variety. And then for the uh, jet stream tomorrow, uh, just cold northwest flow here, and then a trough from the polar vortex dropping into the northwest interior there. So we've got 140 knots out of the northwest here, right across the Alaska Peninsula. Good upper support for those sur strong surface winds there from uh, Bristol Bay, Kodiak Island, and the peninsula. And then continuing south of the panhandle there. And for the uh, 9,000 foot winds, there's that next intense storm coming into the far western Bering Sea out there with uh, 70 to 90 knots at uh, this elevation there, 60 knots edging eastward, and then 35 to 40 knot winds coming around that ridging out here over the eastern Bering Sea. Northwest, 35 to 50 plus knots here coming across the Alaska Peninsula. 30 to 35 or so Kodiak Island, the 40 knot swath up across the southern Kenai Peninsula areas. Pretty breezy, 25 to 35 over much of the interior, a little lighter up along the eastern Arctic coast. And the Panhandle westerlies, 30 to 40 knots. <clears throat> much the same at 3,000 feet with uh, up to 40 knot winds here over the west central interior areas. And these winds out west toward that storm, anywhere from uh, 70, 60 to 80 knots. Lighter under the ridge axis, turbulence looking like this, possible severe, especially for small aircraft out here, Kodiak Island, Kachemak Bay, and the uh, Lucian Range, and then moderate shop up the west side through the central interior, the southeast coast, and of course the western Aleutians.
Just as the sun is part of weather on Earth, it also affects weather in space. The sun creates solar wind by steadily releasing a flow of plasma particles in all directions around it. Sometimes the sun gives off a flash of light and x-rays. This is known as a solar flare. When massive bursts of particles explode into space, we call it a coronal mass ejection, or CME. When a CME is directed toward Earth, it hits the magnetosphere, the magnetic field around our planet that protects us. If the storm is large, we may even get to enjoy a light display in the sky called the auroras. In space, satellites may be damaged, and astronauts should take cover. On Earth, people do not feel any physical effects. We may lose electricity in some areas, polar flights may be rerouted, and satellite services may be disrupted. While these situations aren't ideal, they are rare and fixable. This is why we will continue to study the Sun and its interactions with Earth and the Solar System. Longing for more space, open skies, and exotic travel? Then look up, about 30 to 600 miles straight up at the ionosphere, Earth's interface to space. Nestled far above the clouds but below outer space, this little understood destination invites you to explore its many features. Experience both the weather from Earth and the weather from space. Marvel at the ballet of radio waves and navigation signals, like GPS, leaping through this particle paradise. Sit back, relax, and take in the aurora, some satellites, and the International Space Station as they sail by. And you'll want your camera handy for one of the region's signature features, bright and colorful air glow. This daily show is made possible by the ionosphere's own swarming charged particles. Because that's what the ionosphere is. It's all charged particles. During the day, enjoy the sea of particles, freshly energized by the sun. As the sun sets, this particle party relaxes and the air glow thins. Our quieter nightlife lets you gaze into clearer skies. The ionosphere is in constant motion an amazing effect of space weather. Don't miss when solar storms rain down. The storm separates the particles even more, making this colorful region delightfully more dense in some places and stunningly sparse in others. And don't forget about storms from Earth below. Your weather from back home also stirs up this one-of-a-kind destination. Experience the unique beauty of every season as changes in Earth's atmosphere daily and annually can create pressure waves, changing the ionosphere's shape and density. Venture to the equator, where our particles are packed in lush and thick. Cruise along a magnetic field line and see how the ionosphere's charged material also interacts with Earth's own magnetic field. Don't miss the superhighway of particles zipping out to space and back down to the planet. This unpredictable parade of charged particles can help you unplug and unwind. This is because the crowd of particles can garble the radio and satellite communications from home. The ionosphere welcomes you to discover more about this little-known region. After all, once you've explored this interface to space, who knows how much farther you'll be able to go. When a star, bigger and more massive than the sun, runs out of fuel at the end of its life, its core collapses while the outer layers are blown off in a supernova explosion. What's left behind depends on the star's original mass. A star roughly 10 to 20 times our sun leaves behind a neutron star. A more massive star becomes a black hole. Unlike black holes, neutron stars are directly observable, usually as pulsars, the lighthouses of the cosmos. Discovered 50 years ago, they are the densest observable objects in the universe. 
Neutron stars compress up to twice the sun's mass into a city-sized sphere. Matter is packed so tightly that a teaspoon of neutron star interior would weigh more than a billion tons on Earth. Still, the nature of the ultra-dense matter in the cores of neutron stars is unknown. Because neutron stars pack so much mass into such a tiny volume, they produce gravity strong enough to bend the light they emit, distorting their appearance in a way that enables the mass and size of the star to be measured. Scientists cannot reproduce the extreme conditions in and around neutron stars on Earth. They must look into the galaxy to answer decades-old questions about extreme matter and gravity. NASA's Neutron Star Interior Composition Explorer mission, or NISA, will make X-ray observations of neutron stars from its perch on the International Space Station. It will give astronomers more insight into these mysterious objects, helping determine what is under their surface. A multi-purpose mission, NISA includes a technology demonstration called Sextant. It will analyze NISA's observations to validate the use of rapidly rotating neutron stars as navigation beacons for travel in deep space throughout the solar system and beyond. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Looking at today's sea ice analysis, continuing to see ice expansion here. Uh, around St. Lawrence Island, the Bering Strait, and a little bit out to the west, and also, of course, in the Chukchi Sea, a little bit thicker, but that's not going to last. And uh, starting about Wednesday night, another big, strong push of southerly winds is going to blast up into the area there, and that should just tend to blow it back into the coast or on up into the Chukchi Sea like it did a week or two ago. Coastal water forecast, west winds 35 knots all across the uh, outer coastline tomorrow with seas uh, 20 to 24 feet. South to southwest over the central and inside waters with uh, southerlies at 30 knots for northern Lynn Canal. Those winds will swing around to the north at about the same speed on Wednesday. 30 knot winds diminish to 20 here for the uh, Stevens Passage area. Clarence Strait just southeast at 15. We've got northwest 30 knots there on the south coast. Otherwise, 35 to 40 knot northeasterlies for the central coast turning east at 30 up north. And then for Prince William Sound, gales in the forecast tomorrow with 35 knot northwesterlies increased to 40 knots out of the west here for the North Gulf Coast, picking up to 45 knots back toward the western zone. Minimum gales in store for uh, the Barren Islands, Ketchumac Bay, northwest 30, 20 knots out of the northwest for Southern Cook Inlet. And then for Wednesday, Northern Cook Inlet, north at 10, pretty light up to 20 south of the Forelands, increase in the winds here. 45 knot northwesterlies for the uh, Kachemak Bay, 40 knots for the Barrens. Northerlies 30 to 35 here for the North Gulf Coast. Small craft advisories now for Prince William Sound. And uh, Kodiak Island, northwest winds 30 to 40 knots with uh, strongest here on the east side of the island in that zone. And then 35 knot westerly gales south of the Alaska Peninsula, northwest 30 on the Bering Sea side. Next extends right up into Bristol Bay. Those winds uh, diminish and come northeast there for the bay at 15 knots, with sea spiking at 6 feet. Southeast 25 for the peninsula on the north side, southwest 20 on the south side, and then this northwest flow is starting to diminish, still at 30 knots most of the day, sit connect to Castle Cape, and still looking at 40 knot winds there for the east side of Kodiak Island. And for the Fox Islands tomorrow, northwest 25, mainly Unalaska Island, swinging around to the southeast here, increasing to 30 knots toward Adak and Atka, and that big storm coming in. Increases of winds in the afternoon to east, 50 knots, with seas building 26 feet. And then southwesterly is 55 knots there for the uh, western zone. Otherwise, we've got gales from the southwest becoming southerlies to 40 knots there for the central Aleutians and 30 to 35 knots southeasterlies for the Fox Islands. Southwest coast tomorrow, northwest, 30 knots there right across the area, seas 8 to 10 feet. And small craft varieties is also up to St. Lawrence Island, where northwest winds at 30 will blow. And then westerlies 25 to 30 with seas around 10 feet for St. Matthew and St. Paul Island, as well as St. George. And then for the uh, outlook on Wednesday, gale force southerlies, here come these south winds again that's going to start to erode the ice field back. Uh, southeast 30 to 35 for the southwest coast, a good 40 knot gale there for St. Lawrence Island. Uh, coming in, I'll be in the afternoon, and south 40 for St. Matthew Island. 
Arctic coast, uh, east side, kind of a variable 10 to 15 knot range in the winds there, becoming north of 20. And then 30 knot brisk wind advisories here on the west side down to Cape Thompson. Two whales are northwest gales. And then for the uh, Wednesday uh, forecast, those drop off considerably here south of 15, turning west, 15 to 20 on the west side there, and up to uh, 30 knots, so an increase brisk wind advisories on the eastern Beaufort Sea. For tonight, again, uh, low pressure tracking slowly east, uh, snow over the Copper River Basin, down into the Yakutat area in the northern Panhandle, rain or snow showers down to the south, especially uh, along the outer coastline, Prince Wales Island, for example. Snow showers here, Kodiak Island, Bristol Bay, scattered Alaska Peninsula, and more numerous to the north of this trough, with a narrow band of snow uh, extending from the, actually the north slope in the Arctic coast, right on down the trough axis here to the Yukon Delta, with snow showers either side of that, and uh, kind of a break there, the lull before the storm out over the western central Aleutians. And then the storm force winds come in again tomorrow afternoon and winds coming up to gale force heading toward the central Aleutians. Otherwise high pressure, lighter winds for the uh, eastern Aleutians there. Northwest winds continue but not all that strong, is today anyway in some areas, especially the Alaska Peninsula and Kodiak Island areas, we'll see a de uh, decrease in the winds. Chance of snow, Bristol Bay, scattered isolated snow showers, Kodiak Island in the interior, except along these troughs, a little bit better chance of some more persistent light snow. And then for the next day, the storm cuts across the Queen Charlotte, so they'll bring a chance of snow and wind into the southern panhandle with tightening gradients to the north, and the next system brings snow almost to the northwest or the west coast. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1 800 WX Brief for a formal pre flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. <laughs>